Aloha and welcome to this Aloha Friday. This is the Art of Life and I am Willow Chang Elion. Still learning things by the ropes here, knowing that it's camera two that I'm supposed to look at and make a little eye contact at you. What is the Art of Life about? Well, if this is your first time tuning in, I take delight in profiling people who make Hawaii an interesting, dynamic, and vibrant place. And our guest today certainly fits the bill in spades. This is former representative Corinne Ching, and in the nature of journalistic integrity, I must confess, we go back many, many years, and she is a dear friend, an inspiration, and truly a voice for Hawaii. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Willow. So you've been Mutual. on Think Tech Hawaii before. You've been on the shows uh, in various uh, pretenses for various causes and what have yes. you. But for those who are unfamiliar with the force that is Corinne Ching. Can you tell <laughs> so us a sweet. little bit about yourself? We always like to get the backstory, the creation oh, story of how you came to be, what school you went grad, where you, <laughs> <laughs> what neighborhood you went living, sister. <laughs> so give it oh, to us. Oh, I love Take it. us on a journey. <laughs> you are amazing. And by the way, it's very <laughs> mutual. I think we're so lucky to have you, Willow. And seriously, this is great because people have a chance to find out what's going on, you know, and we try. what we're doing, right? Yeah, and we're an FCC free zone. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So I, I'm really grateful to be here today. And um, well, my backstory, what do you just want to say? Um, local girl, born and raised, um, going back multiple generations, my Chinese side, right. uh, to. Um, probably the 1800s, which is nice. I'm very proud of the fact that some of my ancestors have been somewhat active, hopefully doing good things, you know. Um, and following along in that, um, I think we are I'm always raised to try to help and mm -hmm. that this is home. And so um, I did attend Punahou, uh, cheerleader, whole nine yards. <laughs> you can put it on that, the old buff and blue. Um, and so it was fun, you know, was one year behind uh, our president, President Barack Obama, mm -hmm. and uh, in class of 80. And uh, just love Hawaii, uh, truly, truly, uh, these islands, as we say, right? These islands, they are home. They are so unique throughout the world. Uh, you way more traveled than I am, but traveled enough to know that Hawaii is unique. It is. And um, tr truly worth preserving and preserving what's great about it. And so um, I worked, actually, um, in um, business a little bit and uh, also worked for a lobbyist of small business. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a couple of place, uh, people who do that. That would be um, Sam Sloan. People are familiar with Sam's uh, organization. But this was the legislative center. And uh, then I went on to becoming a uh, English as a second language teacher and the coordinator of the program at Ma'i Ma'i School. Okay. Uh, my, my mother is a teacher. We have a number of teachers in, this, in the family. And so that sort of followed along, although I never thought I'd do that. <laughs> Watching my mom be a teacher, I sometimes thought, eh, I don't know about that. But I did become a teacher. It was one of the most fulfilling things I think I ever have done, working with little ones, um, working, working with the um, <clears throat> you know, second language community. Uh, yeah, we had everything. Because of New Uwanu, we would have the consulate children, as well as those that work, their ch parents probably, you know, some of the best uh, meat shops maybe, or restaurants in Chinatown. Right, right. So nice mixture there. And um, then uh, with my uh, classmate, or I mean, well, one, one, one class above me, uh, Quentin Kavana Nakoa, uh, got involved in, in politics. And, uh, you know, uh, I really very much admire and uh, respected, uh, still respect Representative Quentin Kavana Nakoa and learned a lot that uh, perhaps, you know, public service could be done in dignity. And so, um, with dignity. And uh, something that I hate to say, but it's true that I think a lot of people of our background, we say, wow, you know, What's it going to take? Can it be done with dignity? And he, he was a model for that, I felt. And so um, when he asked me to run, I, I did say yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it my first two tries. Uh, probably one of the closest races in the state. It's hard to wake up at 4 a.m. Yeah. Two votes, three. Uh, 18, 18, okay, which is small. less than 1%, yeah. fraction of 1% of the vote registered. Um, but made it as a landslide, the, landslide uh, the third time, what we call as landslide in a third house race. Third time's a charm. Yeah, third time's a charm for me it was. Yeah. And had the honor and privilege to serve the people of Lili Hanu'uanu for 10 years. And a true joy, anyone out there who is thinking about public service, I highly recommend it in that, in that vein, in that perspective that 
You just, uh, it is a rewarding um, career, very much so, something you can learn a lot when you are with nine-year-olds to young people telling you how they feel, what their ideas are. And we hope we made a difference. We set out to um, have a healthier, safer, um, uh, more uh, vibrant neighborhood. And I feel that some would say that we accomplished that. And additionally, um, our schools are some of the now highest scores in the state, particularly kudos to Lanakila Elementary School that is ranked uh, quite, quite high now. And that's um, you know an area that serves uh, people in the housing and et cetera. So you know it was a it was a chance to serve our great state, and I I appreciate it. I met a lot of really neat people along the way, and that's that's a chapter that now is over and enjoying being a full time mom of a lovely little girl. Those Lena. are <laughs> all very wonderful things to be proud about and proud of. I want to ask you a few questions because sure. you've been on both sides of it as a representative within the process and then also as a citizen, as a mother, as a teacher. Do you believe in term limits? I mean, I have to say, even when you have someone who does a great job, do you feel that there is a malaise that sets in or people become mm -hmm. lackadaisical or maybe they lose their uh, drive because they mm -hmm. feel it's a sure thing. What is your take on something like term yeah. limits? I am so glad you bring up that question because that is a question that's um, brought up particularly around election time mm -hmm. quite often and it is a legitimate concern but let, let me give you my perspective okay. on this. Um, when, when you become a politician you do get the chance to see how all the sort of working pieces work together, business, right. medicine, etc., education and journalism. And I think after much contemplation and what I have seen is that, see, term limits are imposed on the executive branch. Term limits are imposed on every executive branch from the president. He has term limits. He can only serve eight years, mm -hmm. right? FDR was kind of an exception. It was a crazy time. Right. Eight years. The governor, eight years. Uh, the mayor, two terms, whatever it is. It's probably eight years. Um, only in the legislative branch can you go how many years without leaving. Um, what you find, what I've found, is that uh, there are some pretty fine people mm -hmm. who have been there a long time. And like any job, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a business owner, with time comes knowledge. There's so much to know in politics that as you get to know things better, the key is, the real key is not to say, you know, you're doing a great job, so, but it's eight years, let's, let's let you go. Because what really happens is musical chairs. Right. So what you really have is musical chairs. So what happens is someone serves in the Senate, I mean, or whatever it is, is this, and they shift over to city, then they do that example, they go back. You see this with, for example, Romy Cachola is now in the house, they did right. a switch. Joey was there, the switch is there, blah, blah, you know, Joey Monahan. So what you have is just musical chairs. So there's nothing special about term limits. What is special, which is lacking, and what I think you are doing, what this outfit is doing, is key, which has been key since the, since the inception of our country, is a strong civic and journalistic expression of what exactly is going on. And people making that connection that yeah, I do kind of want to know what's going on. See, I think there are people who think there's a political junkie and there's other things, but it's not. Um, you cannot say, oh, I only focus on politics or I don't care about politics. I get a lot of people who say, you know, oh, yes. ain't my thing. I'm an artist or I'm a this. I've got enough to do. I'm a mom. I, I don't ha I'm not a political junkie. Don't want to know it. Don't, don't want to vote. Don't watch C-SPAN. <laughs> don't want to vote because depress whatever, a legitimate yeah. concern, it might be depressing. But who is going to make that connection that you, if you were to calculate out your taxes, calculate out the time, the frustration, the sadness you have when something goes wrong and ultimately it, the fine line, the chain of connection goes back to government. When, are, when is the electorate going to understand, and I know they're disappointed, they voted for someone, they ended up being not so great, but you can't think like that, but when are they going to make the connection? that who is in office makes a direct impact on your everyday life. And as they say, the long arm of the law, there's nothing a politician doesn't have an effect on that cannot touch. Even the air you breathe has an effect in public policy. 
is affected by public policy. So the key is is an, 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 is an educated electorate. Right. And, and when you have someone who's, I hate to say, I'm going to use a big C word, but yeah, corrupt, you know, corrupt, or they're doing something that you say, whoa, that is way not my voice speaking. The key is to put that on record and get them out. But my personal opinion, if there were not certain people, for example, if there were term limits, mm -hmm. Sam Sloan, albeit people can have issues about Sam. Clayton He would be gone as But well. Sam Sloan would be gone. Yeah. Sam Sloan is the last only Republican left bar name in the Senate. You would also have Cynthia Thielen if, if term limits were imposed and she mm -hmm. wasn't there. There have been times everyone, be it Democrat or Republican, doesn't matter, are grateful eternally to the research and some of the uh, right. And Kobayashi, there are people Clayton who are lions and yeah. lionesses. So Long it's time. really quality. Is my my? It's the journalists. We have to we have to hold our the feet accountable. You know the people accountable to their actions. You know that's what you sign up for in politics, right? That's true. Yeah. I appreciate your well, that's just my uh, your answer. Okay, I have yeah. another mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. Because, because you and I have an opinion and we care about these things and you're watching. I wish more people yeah, people And you're would, filming. Yeah. Uh, just recently the Supreme Court passed legislation that now eliminates caps, financial caps that are, are donations, super okay. PACs and all those things. Thoughts and feelings on that. I'm just going to go on record and say I think this is, was a terrible day yeah. for American yeah. politics because it certainly opens up the floodgate mm -hmm. to the highest bidder. And clearly a smart person who has lots of money can give money to both parties, which many people do, so they, uh, right. you know, cover their bases, so to speak. But what's your right. thought? I mean, I feel like we've really veered so far away from the original process of the concept or the idealistic mm -hmm. idea that people can all have some type of representation, mm -hmm. if only through their singular vote. And granted, that has changed as well with the right. suffragette movement and civil rights movement. But in the perfect world that we're trying to strive for yeah. still, hopefully in 2014, where yeah. every American citizen who is legal and lawful has a vote, it's hard to say that you have fair choices when the uh, media so side, yeah, yeah, the scale is so tipped in favor of those who have the money to pay for the advertisement. Thoughts? I, I think that is so very exceptionally accurate. It's accurate. But l let me explain how this works, having mm -hmm. been in the political, as you say. Right. Um, so you're absolutely right. The more signs someone has, it's really like Sun Tzu, you know, it's um, the concept of the art of war. This is what politics is, as they say, it's civilized warfare. So every sign you have, we're not every so civilized. <laughs> it's not right. Yeah, well, yeah. At least we're not. Well, not yet. Cutting yeah. off heads, but uh, and laying them on doorsteps. But um, but right. The more signs you have, those are mm -hmm. like soldiers. They're constantly showing. You know, yeah. The more commercials you have, so very right. Saturation. It's just like a product. So soda. So the thing is, Your is um, oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that. Um, you're, you're absolutely right, and, and I think it's obscene when, when I, even as a politician, mm -hmm. as a politician or ex-politician, to see how much money, when we tipped the billion dollar mark or whatever it was, to say this is how much it takes to run for office. There are three problems with that. There's so much, pe people need, there are other places that need money, so someone's making money. Right. The, the sign maker's making money, the PR man is making money, of course, our media. But also it, it intimidates people and they don't think they can run for office because mm -hmm. they don't think they can raise that kind well, of money. They don't money. want to be bankrupt just because they want to serve. Yeah, exactly. So the question becomes though, if you were to cap it, there are other influences as well. Some people have a more prominent name than others, mm -hmm. particularly in small communities like ours. Right. You know, we have old families that have been here a long time or they have illustrious right. members. So when you have a name that catches, let's say the Holt name, uh, mm -hmm. John Dominus Holt. Many people will know that any Holt probably may be related to our John Dominus. That gives an advantage. Right. Um, attractability. Uh, today, with the internet, that's the equalizer. Fabulous, yay, for the social media. You know, um, social media is the great equalizer. But an attractive candidate, a candidate that has a certain degree from a certain college, these are all variables in what create the highest votes or, or attractability, you know, attractiveness. Um, the, I think it gets obscene, so I think I tend to lean on to agree with you that we have to say when is enough enough. 
Yeah. That question has to be asked. I mean, we're, we're getting like a largesse of, of money going towards this when we have other, when those same corporations, too bad they couldn't put the money into something tangible for exactly. the people. Right. At the same time, what would happen with the rule, the laws that we have proposed, what our attorneys or legislators have proposed, when you do put a cap on um, and people need money, so like I said, those other variables might come into play. Uh, someone's got a prominent name or uh, has a long time. The incumbent, um, you know, somebody who's an incumbent has a, a lot of um, maybe connections so they have an advantage. The key is not to get the taxpayer to have to pay for it. That would be the ultimate insult. When the taxpayer, that was one of the uh, alternatives, to get taxpayers to pay for it. Well, in the big scope, it looks really nice and fair, like, okay, we're just going to say everyone can spend this much and the taxpayer is going to pay for it. But it's a bit obscene when you think about it. If all the candidates are people you are sort of, to use the word, sorry, a little strong, but repulsed by, and your taxpayer's money without your uh, approval is going towards that. Mm. So there's got to be a better way. My, my hopes is that in 2014, can't we get uh, campaign candidates to start actually doing something for us during campaign? Why don't you prove <laughs> to us how much you love us by what we did, Quentin Kawana Nakoa, paint a park, Quentin painted the park, cleaned up rubbish, yeah. improved the place, so that after the election's over, at least even if you didn't win or you win, we've got a new park. Exactly. <laughs> you know, instead of these signs that are just gonna go in the landfill, you know, the signs are gonna yeah. go in the landfill and all that. And it's gonna be an additional burden to the people. So, you know, we gotta get creative, right? This is the I key. Like that. Gotta get creative. Ooh. Win win. We're always Synapses about the win win. Firing off, firing off. It's the part of the show that I am always sad and reluctant to do. That's the small break, but that's a chance for you to go get a beverage. Okay. I'm yes. filled by green tea. We'll a see you in about coffee. 20 <laughs> seconds, 40 seconds or so. This is the art of life. Hello, I'm Martin Despang, and I'm the host together with the one and only Ali Amashta, and our show is called Urban Transcendence. And urban transcendence is about identifying where we have a unique situation of a vibrant city in one of the most beautiful natural environments. So how these two can coincide, sometimes conflict, how they could find reciprocity in the 21st century is what we're excited about. And we're planning on bringing in uh, a diverse body of, of guests both from the arts and the science and the established and the wise and the emerging generation. So hope you will join us. We'll always be on on Thursdays from 1 to 2 p.m. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Willow Chang Alion and this is The Art of Life. We broadcast live every Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. here in the heart of downtown at Pioneer Plaza. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. If you are a repeat offender, you are my favorite, <laughs> favorite kind of people. We have all the back episodes uploaded on the Art of Life Facebook page. That's the Art of Life with Willow Chang. I did all the dirty work for you so you don't have to sleuth around and spend three hours on YouTube trying to find your favorite episode. All 35 episodes are up there and I strongly implore you to check it out. I am so thrilled and honored with the guests that we have had. And I'm equally thrilled and honored to have Ooh. our guest today, Representative, former Representative Corinne Ching in the house. Thank you. Thank She's you. like my, my <laughs> Hoppe sister. We, uh, we have enough of the Venn diagram that overlap, <laughs> and yet enough that's different where it keeps it right. very interesting. Absolutely. So uh, I'm just Forever. kind of shooting mm -hmm. from the hip as we do here uh, at the Art of Life. And I want to ask you yeah. about this. So. Yes more civic related things Absolutely. about the Love Aina. It. Just recently, someone proposed and suggested that they rebuild the Aloha Stadium. And this is when I roll my eyes, because I'm yes. not an eye roller, <laughs> but uh, that wonderful Rust Palace, <laughs> the protective the rust, for those of you who are <coughs> unfamiliar, uh, yes. when this lovely structure was built, it started rusting uh, shortly thereafter of its construction, and people complained and they said, what the hey, this thing is a rust palace, and you gotta love this. The uh, people in charge of building that said, oh, well, that is protective rust. Yeah. It's a protective layer of rust, as if that's even a logical uh, concept. So here yeah. we have our lovely little rust bucket known as the <laughs> Aloha Stadium. Yeah. And some people have suggested, the powers that be, that this be rebuilt. Yeah. 
In addition to some people with their pie in the sky wanting to have Neil Blaisdell Arena rebuilt, Oh, dear. In addition to our lovely, expensive, yeah. overpriced rail that mm -hmm. is in the process of being built. So I don't think we have the money we for all money. of these projects. I was wondering, what is your thought on uh, private, can I say this, mm -hmm. privatization, Ooh, mm -hmm. multi-syllabic word mm -hmm. there, yeah. uh, like the Staples Center, or we could say, you know, the Kodak Hula Show. What if Aloha Stadium, someone else picked up the tab and their name was on it? Do you like this as a solution? Do you not like this idea? Um, what are your thoughts on this? Because oh, it certainly yeah. is a solution. It may not be the one that we aspire for, but it's mm -hmm. always nicer when someone else puts the bill. Oh, absolutely. No, privatization in most cases I think works well because, you know, as we're seeing, and I'm, I'm not going to bring up any other, try to do, go into another direction, but, mm -hmm. you know, there is a VA scandal going on right now in the right. national scene. And, you know, people like myself who are believers that private industry does things better, more efficiently because they have to right. in many areas, you know, that, that's sort of our, like, exhibit A, you know. And so the thing is, is when government does do things, you just have to understand the nature of the beast. You have to love it. You have to love it for all its its strengths, but to be aware of its 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 weaknesses. So when government gets involved, you gotta wonder: are is a best person of merit always being picked when you have the government complexities? You know, relationships. Let's put it that way. What do they call them? Relationships. So the thing is, is you had probably some things going on and it depends on which attorney you want to talk to. I mean attorneys were getting rich over this I'm sure, right? right? The litigation over the Aloha Stadium, which by the way I did cheerlead lead at, I'll never forget, when it was looking good <laughs> no, was no, for that whole six months. No, just, <laughs> Before no. it was rust colored and oh, right. rust covered. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a it's an ever constant reminder that why wasn't this checked beforehand? Well, because maybe you had people in charge, and I don't know enough about it, but I'm just saying theoretically. Mm -hmm. right. People in charge, you said, well, it's just my job. Versus, whoa, this is my company, this is my reputation, this is my future, and by golly, I'm going to check to make sure everything's working well. It is what it is, and it's not the first time, unfortunately, right? right. I mean, we have a string of them. Oh, How about goodness. the baseball field that they said specifically, right? Oh, we and that, that softball field right yeah. by the former temporary dance building that, was redone yeah, at least two about. to three yeah. times, I know, because it was when I was yeah. there. Um, that's Jay Fidelis blowing his nose, in case you're wondering <laughs> oh, what that no. <laughs> mystery sound is. Uh, he's no, left okay. the building. Okay. Three yeah. times they rebuilt that softball stadium yes. because they didn't, have the clearance and the sight lines and it the just wasn't was functioning. Right. I mean, yeah. So hello? again, <laughs> why why is this happening? Well, you know, what I think is there's a there is a culture which is easy to fall into. Hawaii's probably not exempt from this. It's all over the United States. It's all over any kind of a bureaucratic uh, institution where I come in, I'm paid for X amount, but it because it I don't have ownership in it, I don't care as much. Starbucks is an example of a different privatization. I say, I'm gonna give you a little bit of the, the, the profit. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, and this is the, the essence of, of, of what we believe as Republicans or capitalists, when I own it, whoa, I care a little more. It's like the person who owns the condo versus the person who rents the condo. Right. You know, it's just that does that bill come to me or does it go somewhere else? So back to this, to this specific example, you're talking about the Aloha Stadium and add, add the other examples. Um, it, it's a travesty and it's something that we ought to learn from. You know, mistakes are a good thing to learn from, but it doesn't seem like we're learning as I fast as we need to. I do think that giving it to maybe someone who, because their name is on it, they're going to care about it. Now, having gone through this at the legislature, it was, you know, sort of debated and it's come up in numerous times, numerous administrations. Um, it's very expensive to fix and this is where the proposal is coming from. Mm. Do you spend all this money on sort of a, 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 a fixture, a, a, you know, edifice that is not doing so well or do you say, look, it's Start time to just forget it, flatten the thing and rebuild? I would love to see some big corporate, you know, we've got our share of billionaires, we've got we sure Larry do. Ellison, we've got a Mr. lot of them, maybe we need to be Ellison yeah. Stadium, right? Who knows? But back to the, the reasoning for all this now, I do have except, uh, exception though on, you know, my background as a preservationist, but it's mm -hmm. not even just being a preservationist, it's really not about that. It's more about the sense of place and the character of a city. Right. 
And I didn't bring my newspaper article today, but in the newspaper today, uh, Star Advertiser, there the headline says, you know, uh, something akin to the tourism numbers are dropping. And well, it has been for quite oh, some time. Yeah. This and, is not a new mm -hmm, recent development. Yeah. And uh, I won't tell you who he was, but he's a major CEO. He's on his way to San Francisco to meet with one of the Zuckerbergs. And uh, he's from Europe. I met him and his fiance in Europe, his beautiful fiance is from Ukraine. And I'll tell you, this is not the first time I've gotten feedback. They were ready to leave because they saw Waikiki. They didn't feel it had the charm they were looking for. These are people who would have spent a lot of money. They ended up spending a lot of money because I said, hold on, wait, let me take you to Kailua. <laughs> let me take you to Lanika. Let me, take, let me show you the island. Then they were, ah, okay, so they ended up staying. But it begs the question, what are we doing? Do we have a sense of place? Do we have a sense of what we look like to the person who does come from Austria or from uh, you know, from uh, well-to-do uh, first world countries, etc., that see glass and brass every day of their life. The Neil Blaisdell is a specific, um, and, it, and it is a heartfelt place for us locals. Right. So that has to factor into the equation of this unique structure that looks like whatever an you want to call it, an egg, <laughs> a, a, a clam, <laughs> an oyster, a, you know, but it is unique. And and it's part of our architectural landscape. That's why I have to give my hats off to Howard Hughes, his corporation. Yeah. Some people don't always agree, but at least they saved the IBM building, which is a Vladimir Osipov. Amen. So that's a little bright spot. But so, you know, I don't maybe care we for build the, the stadium, but that they've built. Yeah, and so this is, know. well, this is right to sustain the construction industry, which yeah. runs a lot of Hawaii. Speaking <laughs> of construction, so that also ties in with Kaka'ako. So, I think the toll, the tally, is 22 proposed buildings in that lovely the small wall, you mean? vicinity. Not the Berlin Wall, the Not Hawaii the wall. wall. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is what I can't understand, because <clears throat> I think this goes along with privatization. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I just like went right through that multisyllabic <laughs> word. I'm having a hard time That's with okay. that today. Republicans, we use tea. it a lot. Privatization. Yes. Privatization. <laughs> I think it's perfectly fine, and it makes sense, that if you are going to ask for all of these uh, lifts on your height restrictions and you're going to build and make this space so much more dense and the facilities are aging and older, yes, you should pony up the money for a park. Yes, you should pony up the money for a sewer system, a functioning sewer system. How about that? Um, yes, you should invest in building a school. I mean, they're talking about this utopic, wonderful place where young families are going to have starter units and it's going to be 30% affordable. Where are those kids going to go to school? There's right. no elementary school yeah. in that vicinity. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, why not? Why shouldn't they put their money and invest back into the neighborhood if they want to set up shop there? That's yeah, how and that's I where think. our leaders have to get involved, okay? So you, you touched on a very sensitive um, you know, issue for myself. I didn't mention this, but I was actually raised not in Liliha. My grandparents were from there, but I grew up in Kaimaki. And, you know, one, one year shy of its century, uh, would have been a century old, the cornerstone laid by Queen Lilio Kalani, down went Lilio Kalani School. And some of my colleagues at the legislature believe, well, you know, not so much people, uh, there's not a lot of young families in that area. So there are a Park? Um, no, Lily, uh, right on Cocoa Head Avenue. Oh, yes, yes, And okay. Wai that yeah. school is now not there. I mean, not a school. And so the solution for a lot of people is, gee, you know, let's just get rid of schools. I say there has to be vision. Really, what we continue to lack in this state is an overall vision and how that exactly works and trickles down to the citizen. Healthy communities look like this, and, and, and it's not rocket science, and it's not something unique to Hawaii. If you want to go across the U.S., let's look at successful communities. Mm -hmm. They have a sense of place. They have a walkability factor that goes and talks to your parks, etc. This is a priority, and, and this is up to leaders, be them business leaders, be them who influence politicians business leaders or politicians or those, they have to get on the same page and say, this is what we want. This is a priority for us. So right. let's work it out. If you're going to pony up, yeah, we're going to negotiate with you, but this is unnegotiable. We're going to have X amount of healthy parks, etc. That makes sense. But schools make a community 
because families, and they shouldn't be so narrow-minded to say, oh, right now it's an older community. Yeah, but you know what? Tomorrow, for example, in Liliha, I was always told we're the oldest district. That's why we had such a nice voter turnout. We had the good old World War II greatest generation. Right. Thank goodness for those 442nd guys. I just adore them, member of the Gopher Broke. We had really excellent old Hawaii people. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, um, I consciously wanted to make it attractive to young people. I had my reasons, and I'll tell you what these were, those were. I wanted young people to come home and live with their parents. A lot and of say, people have to. Yeah, yeah, and take care. Because that's how they afford living in Hawaii. Oh, ab it's a win-win. If yeah. mom and dad aren't in that bad uh, health-wise, they can come babysit. They can babysit. This is a good thing. This is a Chinese yeah. concept that, that three generations do live together. Grandma imparts her wisdom and is there when when mommy and dad have to go to work, et cetera. And this, if you, if you look at local families, a mm -hmm. lot of them, to be frank, that are going to Punahou, et cetera, a lot of successful families have this in place. They have the two sets of grandparents reading to the kids while the kid's off at the law firm or whatever, he has a lawyer job, whatever. This is what it is to be successful. So I wanted to bring the young people and want them to say, not be so, so oh, I don't want to live in Liliha, I prefer Hawaii Kai. I wanted them to come home. I wanted them to come home to their parents. I wanted them to be together. And I wanted a nice, even, balanced community. Well, we did it. So the truth is it can be done. When people just stereotype and mm -hmm. say, oh, this is an old community, book closed. Um, this is an old community in, community in 2014. But the minute there are things in place, a new cafe, theater, things for people to do, they feel it's hip, good restaurants, you're going to bring back those young people. And we did it in Liliha. Yeah. And actually, we, we run, ran the numbers, and it's significantly younger in 2012 now to 14. Um, and so the fact is, is when you have younger kids, you have to plan that out, have the vision to say, we're not going to close the school. Because yes, maybe it's old now, but you know it doesn't mean it's forever going to be old. And, and we want a nice balance, balance. This is what the Chinese say, balance. Yin-yang. Yin -yang, they yeah. say health is derived of balance. And um, as grows the green grass from the rain, if that comes from the sky, the, the rain, and the sun. And, and this is what causes things to grow. So we have to think of our communities, be ever loyal to our people. Ever loyal to our people. Not just the pocketbook, yes. You can say, oh, I'm, I'm providing jobs. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you're providing jobs for all those guys that you're shipping in from the mainland, too. You and know, those let's jobs be honest are about short term. it. You know? Construction is a short term be solution honest. because once it's built, well, you got to hustle and find your next job. I will yeah. take it and even narrow it down to something even simpler than schools and parks and things like that. I'm going to just say, Cleanliness. Oh, the what? homeless problem. Well, we and have a major homeless problem. not even just our problem, homeless yeah. problem. You know, there's mm -hmm, a Facebook yeah. page. Mm -hmm. I think you should check it out. It's called Vintage Hawaii. It's a fabulous little page. And my mother and I were scrolling through it because she can see the images and fill in the blanks of what it was like when she moved here yeah. in uh, 61, between 61 and 62. Sure. And regardless of whether if somebody tweaked some of the color on some of the photos, which is a possibility, the thing that surprises me most from this time period, from the turn of the century all the way up to the 80s, because that's their window, mm -hmm. is how clean. These are not just yes. postcards. These are people's personal pictures that they have uploaded to um, stoke the fires of nostalgia. Very effective. But I'll tell you, after looking at that for about half an hour, I feel depressed because I look and I see there's the absence of graffiti, there aren't weeds, there aren't like right. three cars parked in front of the garage and you're going to someday fix those things. I mean, and there used to be perhaps neighborhoods or pockets where this was more prevalent and people would say, oh, well, that's a lower socioeconomic group, that's Kalihi or that's whatever. It's all over people. Kaka. It mm -hmm. is all over Honolulu. Honolulu. It is. Honolulu is littered with graffiti, mm -hmm. it is littered with trash, there are weeds that are out of control. There, I mean, I yeah. look at it and I just think we look so shabby and so tired. We do. What has happened to Honolulu? Well, you know, this is this is the thing. Is um, I, I'm going out on a limb here to tell mm -hmm. you this, but after much thought and many years of not just in government, I worked in other advocacy roles. You know, um, 
people will take the tip from their leader. The, the titular head matters, and they pick up on what is said, but they also pick up what is done, what is the overall feeling that what's okay. This is the nature of the human. Human beings are social creatures. So if the principal of a school, for mm -hmm. example, um, sets forth a culture that says, this matters, there are standards, but if there's a feeling of laissez-faire and, oh well, or moreover, what you're seeing, I think, what, what you're seeing is you're seeing, um, I care only about me and how much money I make and what I care about and it's me and I'm not necessarily connected and have to or want to because I'm not getting paid to yeah. or I'm not. This mentality that I only do so far as, as I am paid is my department. Again, going back, I, I hate to say but I do feel that tends to be something that is um, seen a lot in government. Um, this is my job. That's not my job. This is right. my versus I think what you had in those days, I did not live in those days, but I was raised by people who lived in those days, was a job well done. And, and that if you see something, a, a cup turned over, it might not be your table, it might not be your neighborhood, but you're going to write that. I would this also is the add difference. to that, yeah. the vestiges of a shame-based culture, which oh, yeah. I yeah. love our local Japanese culture. <laughs> and, and you know what, I think it's a product of that, doing your yard, making sure the weeds were taken care of, making sure your house looks nice. I'm not suggesting that we should return to shaming each other. Flip it and turn it into a source of pride. Honor, because, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that there's something respectable and it makes you feel better. There are so many studies, we know this, that crime goes down, that everything yeah. flourishes and benefits with a clean space. I certainly like a clean place. Yeah. And this is nothing about OCD or, you know, monitoring your yeah. neighbors and telling them what to do. It's like, where is the personal responsibility? I miss you, Jeremy Harris. Your vision yeah. and commitment to <laughs> beauty right. and aesthetics is something that right. was a very beautiful thing in Hawaii. Yeah. And I just, I wonder, like, how did we get so far away from that? Well, that's, yeah, going back to that, it's that, that honor and that um, I care about someone else mm -hmm. besides myself. I think, you know, there is a big thing of uh, a cultural, uh, oh, it's all about me, and you know, it's good to be independent. It's good to care and have a healthy self-esteem. That wow, you know, I have my own, uh, my own destiny or what, what not, but not outside of caring about other people. And that's exactly right because what they need to know is when you uh, have your car all over, the, all over the yard, and uh, in some cases, I've even seen a car sort of parked halfway on the poly going into town and I went, whoa, <laughs> that guy is waiting for some kind of accident. I just hope no one else gets hurt that, that's in the in, in innocent bystander. Um, it's about caring that we're all in this together and that an honorable person. You know, that conversation, we're not, no one's perfect, <laughs> number one me, but just the I conversation second, of the honor. Not her, but I second myself on that, not perfect. Okay. No, I mean, who is? But you strive for it, right? Yeah. You strive for well, it. To, the, say, to reach it the summit. To, As our Ali yeah, said, yeah, you know to what I strive. mean? That this concept of like desiring excellence is not a foreign concept. Our own Hawaiian Ali'i suggested that to our people to strive for excellence, to aspire to have something good, whether it was a source of pride, whether it was a source of dignity, whether it was a reflection on your family. I mean, what, I mean these are good things. There's nothing wrong with that. I would yeah. love for people to just think about that, embrace that in a small way, on a di small daily basis, being a good citizen. <clears throat> I mean, that's a it's beautiful thing. It's being a thing. good citizen. It's being a good citizen, and it's bringing that back into maybe your cocktail discussion. You know, that sort of person, you know, honor. Uh, when did, you know, honor was a sort of a thing that I think our grandparents' generation, this was how you judged a man, a mensch, as they say, right? This is a real man, you know, honorable. And, um, and, and life, you know, goes by quickly. And, uh, you know, yeah, you might have your new car today, but hey, you will, hopefully, we all get older. The, the, right. the <laughs> alternative ain't so hot, so, <laughs> you know, we get older. So be a person that's done a good thing. But I, I agree with you. I just the other day, Willow, was driving the course uh, from Kaimaki down to the Kaka'ako area, and just, Kaimaki's gotten hit really badly. Yeah. Just horrified. I said, do I live in Honolulu or Tijuana? You know, I mean, we're, and yet, 
some of us, I mean, some people. But we people, have no ice cream vendors. There you, well, <laughs> maybe bring back the ice cream jacket. It'll balance things out. But it, it is, you're right, it's a problem. And someone's just got to put their foot down and speak up. That's why, again, these forums are very important. And say it. And maybe one person starts to say, this is unacceptable. And I was all for, there's a couple beautiful murals, I mm -hmm. must say. The one specifically in front of Fresh Cafe, I think is stunning. The things done for but, Pow Wow, which serve a purpose, which is yeah. uh, linking that dialogue of educational things, things and that art. are urban mm -hmm. and art, beautiful. Right. There, I have no problem with planned murals right. that sh truly show the artistry for and that the diversity. For that particular neighborhood. But when it's like just some moron, yeah, I said <laughs> that, with a felt pen who's just tagging yeah. on everything. And it's youth gangs. It's, yeah. it's like a, a dog peeing on every piece of That's furniture says, yeah. to say this is mine. It, yeah. uh, I'm telling you, it makes me just want to bring in some Sharia law and, and get rid of that opposable thumb. It's like, <laughs> oh, try tagging something now that your thumb isn't working, Mustafa. I mean, it's, uh, it's yeah. so difficult disrespectful yeah. it really 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 is and I'm an artist and I love art but I don't want you tagging the you know the grocery stands the news stands the free wall that someone just painted and you think it's a good idea I mean trees did yeah. you see that yeah. in Mililani yeah. I mean people graffitiing trees where is the functioning brainstem in this well and now as a former elementary school albeit elementary school ESL teacher mm -hmm having spent 10 years in the DOE, and I love ki kids, you know, this is probably why I got into politics, I love children. I will say this. <laughs> There's lots is that, of children that are politicians. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I said I, it. <laughs> I, that's right, but these, and they are kids, I, obviously they're not the 40, 50 year olds who are doing this. Right. They're the youth gangs. A lot of, uh, I don't know if you, every, all the viewers know this, but the police can tell you any day, because we used to have uh, uh, seminars on this and mm -hmm. um, uh, town meetings, you know, they're, they're, they're just describing their youth gang. Those symbols mean something. They translate to, do they do pot or whatever? Do they do something, hot, crystal meth? Do they do an, a bunch of illicit activity? That's what the youth gang uh, uh, symbols are translating to. So this is not just a harmless, oh, I wanted to do my doodling on the wall. This is a, a communication, so you're absolutely right. They are marking the territory. So when another youth gang comes in, and, and marks the wall, the other guy's coming in and saying, no, this isn't your territory, it's our territory. So, you know, back to, what is it, West Side Story? So, the sharks and the yeah, jets. Right, the sharks and the jets. It's going to a rumble. So, right. <laughs> so the thing is, is in defense of kids, once again, kids are kids. Adults are adults. They're the leaders. Adults right. are the leaders. They gotta be it's alpha. Time to, it's time to, um, to try to guide these kids. And, to understand why are they doing this. I personally think that we are not exciting and inspiring the kids that there are other things they can do with their time and that life does go by quickly. Yeah. So, you know, not to be uh, so uh, cliche, but the truth is you do have to seize the day because let me tell you, your friends out there, they are. The guys who have a good education, good background, they are, and you can too. You can too. You don't have to waste your time causing business to have to repaint the wall. Why not let's get you involved in something substantive. Learn code, that's where the or call get yourself, is. Yeah, l get yourself a graphic design company. Yeah. Let's help them out. Let's, but, or as you said, get involved in civic. There are problems that we need your help. Yeah. We, children needs to, need to know, this is your home and you're gonna be in charge in about 10 years, maybe less. Get involved. Get involved. Let me teach you how to get involved and feel good about you made this place, this little corner of the world, better. Can I kill the R. Kelly? I believe I can fly. <laughs> They've got to do, we have to inspire them. So um, it's kind of our fault too, I think. I want to ask you something, this because yeah. you might know, not that you're necessarily in charge of waste management, but why do we only have bulky item pickup like once a month? Oh, why is true. that? Well, you, we've got to talk to our, our mayor Caldwell on that. I mean, yeah. I think it's probably a budgetary issue. I, I wouldn't know, I didn't really focus on that too much. I just wanted them to pick it up <laughs> and for my people to put it out at the right time, not too <laughs> early and oh my word, you know, we That's had quite, issues with it's that. But. It turns, it, some streets on this island turn into little shanty towns. They do. I mean, you've got like, 
TVs and mattresses and couches yeah. and refrigerators, and it just sits out there for days yeah. and talk about an eyesore. Well, Ugh. there you go. See, now, if you could get some kids, and maybe they get credit for it in school, again, this is vision. Vision yeah. to me, what does vision mean to me? Vision means you, like a business, it's SWAT, mm -hmm. right? In business, we say, as ascertain your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. You uh, take that business approach to these problems and you say, okay, these are our pluses. These are the things that make Hawaii unique. Right. We want to preserve them. These are the things that our weaknesses want to change them. I say, why can't we work with the schools and say, one of you whippersnappers, sharpies, you're <laughs> going to start this initiative and talk to your friends about how we need their help in that the nicer and more beautiful our communities are, the more happy we're all going to be. That's and true. we're going to attract good energy, and we're going to attract good things, we're going to lower crime because we have lowered crime. Cleaning up, you lower crime. The police will tell you this all the time, broken window theory. Yep. And, and you're going to organize and work with your neighborhood board, and hey, let's do it. Like the way John F. Kennedy had Peace Corps. That was a, that's the inspiration we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about saying, you know what, I believe in you. And I think with the right tools and the right um, path, we'll give you the map, you're going to do great things in your lifetime that you're going to sit back and say, I can't believe I did that. I know a lot of people who are in the Peace Corps. I didn't get to be in the Peace Corps for some reasons. I kind of wanted to be in the Peace Corps. But to travel, et cetera, to see, to adventure, we have to find something that would excite our young people. You know, this is good for your resume, whatever it is. It's good for my resume. It's going to give you a job. You're going to intern. How about this? But get Meet harness some that energy. Foreign women. Oh. <laughs> that might motivate some. <laughs> there you go. Maybe that was it. Or Maybe that men. was the secret of Peace Corps. But you know, to have people um, understand that we, the mommies and daddies, are we getting a little pooped out here. <laughs> I have to tell you, but we are. When you're a mom and dad, you know. But these young people who have no kids, hey, go for it. We need you. Go We're for it. We're all in this together. We're we all are. in this together. Our strengths you know and weaknesses, yeah. I'll yeah. tell you, one of my only regrets about this show is that it's an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and you know well, what that means. We can I'm go so on glad we had this time together. Yes. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Did yeah. I just say the iceberg? Is this only sure. the tip of the iceberg? There's so many things that we have yet to talk about. Uh, sure. We didn't even get to the natatorium. Oh, Don't get us started. Yeah. We'll just start foaming at the mouth about that. Historic preve uh, preservation, uh, the, the greatness of Hapa culture. There's so many things Corey and I could just... <laughs> If you were ever stuck in an elevator with either of us, we could keep you very entertained. You'd either be fascinated or just be praying for someone to open up the elevator. We will have you again for I would sure. Love to be here. It's um, my pleasure. But thank you for your time thank and your you. insightful, intelligent, and impassioned insights. You know, please, we encourage you to have this discussion. Crack it open, like Corin said, at your cocktail party, your soiree, around the water cooler, whatever it is. Write about it on Facebook. Give a prompt because I think the thing that's essential is that as soon as you discuss it in whatever the forum is, electronically or in person, face to face you incite dialogue and you get people yes. to think about it and that's the most important thing because if you're thinking about it your heart's going to follow that's everyone right. feels impassioned about the place they live in their kids their family and what have you so let's start small and just let that expand to become Absolutely. you know a global effort always starts with the community it starts with home so Absolutely. what are you going to do this weekend my friends we are on the cusp of june summertime is here people have more free time there's a longer day you have more energy Harness that into something productive and write to us. Let us know what you're doing. Drop us a line at Think Tech Hawaii or Art of Life. We want to know what you're up to and make it happen. Thank Please you. Please join us next week. I'm your host, Willa Chang Elion. Corinne Chang, The Art of Life. Always a pleasure keeping it Pono. Mm -hmm.